Welcome to episode 42 of Fire Sale Franchise. Plenty going on at the start of this one. We've got contracts to negotiate. Apparently, if Oek Prilumu is available to play again, I don't remember him getting injured. But of course, that's good news considering pretty much everybody's getting injured at the moment. Contracts. These are big because Derek Milner is about to show his worth having to fill in for Darren Stanley, who has a shoulder tear. Michael Thomas, who want to resign. Keith Marshall, we're going to resign. Even though Will Judy is looking crazy right now. But of course, we're going to keep all these if they're not going to cost us too much. Kind of fat crawl. Let's get him back on board as well. Again, showing his value because we've got injuries. All of a sudden, he looks a lot more important. So again, oh, I like the length, but that's about it. Get over yourselves, people. Derek Milner, you said the same thing. We're going to pay him off. That's a tiny contract, to be fair. Let's try this. This is exactly the offer I was hoping to get. Well, that's lucky because I was just randomly pressing numbers up. Michael Thomas, what are you after? If you just take this, I will be happy. There we go. Thank you very much. And on the topic of wide receivers, I think I will try and draft one this year. Chance Sugar's been as good as he is. Broken collarbone out four weeks. You know what? He is very soft, but we're actually going to leave it. That's the big thing that's happening now. I don't see any point in re-signing Keith Marshall. We can at least try later in the season because we'll get a longer look at Will Judy because he's always been injured recently. And Will Judy is genuinely looking like a bona fide starter. Is in... Well, we'll see this game, you know. We're kind of starting to heat up now. My point about the wide receivers was with Chance Sugars being so good, we can... Is in... He's incredible right now. 92 overall. It makes me want a wide receiver with a similar skill set, similar overall, you know, being good at everything. Although Brandon Coleman's stats are actually very good, he still hasn't got quite the speed and everything. I want a superstar. I think that would absolutely complete this offense. Will Judy, let's see if we can get him Offensive Rookie of the Year in all honesty. Defensively, we're pretty much set. I don't know why I'm now going into a discussion of what we need in the draft, but apparently that's what I'm doing. Very excited to see Tremont Steed though. Obviously, we'll see him in this game and pretty much, well, that's it, isn't it? Let's get into this game against the Panthers. Who are ahead of us? If we beat them here, it means we'll go first in the NFC South and maybe have a chance of making the playoffs, even if we do finish 8-8, eight and eight, which we are on track to do at the moment, which obviously we need to work on as well. So this is the very first play of the game and they find a huge hole through the middle. This is exactly what the Panthers did to us in the last game. Ronald Darby manages to catch him at the 21-yard line. But exactly the same problem as last time. But at least we hold them to three points. And then Will Judy does his own impression of that run. And picks up a whole bunch of yards. 21 yards after contact. 35 total yards. Not bad running from Will Judy. Then on third and 11. Play action. A throw out there. And that's a nice connection there to Tajay Sharp I believe. And then another run with Will Judy on third and one. Absolutely nowhere to go. Gets tackled short. And we miss the field goal attempt. So it's still three to nothing. But at least we're getting on that run game now. There was a nice stop by the defensive tackles there. Third and 11. We just managed to stop them. Short of the first down. But we do nothing with ours. And then it's still first down for them. First and 10. And they make another completion over the middle. Middle of the field for some reason is weak. Second and 5 now. Plenty of time in the pocket. Plenty of time to find a weak hole in the zone. And a huge completion. Now third and goal on the 12. Can we keep them out here? Throws it short. Gets stopped. Nice play by Tremont Steed there. Big hit from him. Will Judy on second and two. Manages to run and gets out to the 50. Will Judy with nice runs in this game. We can say that. Third and four. Has to come out to the right. Throws it. And Chance Sugars can't hold on to it. When do we see that happen? 61-yard field goal attempt. It's wide right. And I believe probably would have been short. Although that's not a great consolation. And there again we see them stopping the running game. We can stop the running game now. That's not a worry. And then Eric Nickerson comes in for the sack on Cam Newton. So we're starting to stop them on offense. Our offense needs to do something though. Down six to nothing. Third and 21. Pass rush wasn't coming. And that should have been an interception by Jameson Nixon. Drops to the floor. And then on the punt away, Derek Milner just absolutely destroys the punter. And they get the penalty for it. So it's first and 10 on the 44-yard line. They run to the outside. He manages to escape, but Carla Fackrell manages to catch Jones there at the very last second. It was looking like another jailbreak. And then on fourth and 10, they kick another field goal. So now it's 9 to nothing, And that's what we're looking at here. First and 10. Throw it out to Will Judy. Makes a man miss. Gets a first down. Will Judy, pretty much the only person on the offense doing anything right now. Third and 9. Quick throw out to Nate Cowan. And he just gets immediately drilled by Luke Keekley. 
Third and nine again, the Panthers didn't do anything. We're looking for something here. Will Judy is open and sitting under pressure, just overthrows him. First and 10, so really the Panthers not doing anything, but then they get this play. Will Judy fumbles the ball. It's happened a couple of times already on our own 27 yard line. First and 10, at least we stop them for a loss there. Eric Nickerson in on that tackle. But then on first and 10, a little bit later, a quick throw into Philly Brown. He killed us again in the previous game with those inside routes and we couldn't stop him there. But then they have the audacity to go for a two point conversion and Kyler Fackrell drills Cam Newton before he can really throw the ball. And then on third and 10 there, that was Tremont Steed with the pass breakup. So Tremont Steed making an impact in this game. First and 10 for us. Nice completion to Brandon Coleman. That's the first big passing play of the day really. Second and 10. Another completion to Tajay Sharp. He's starting to get going now as well. And then third and inches. We're going to go look for Tajay Sharp again. He tries to juke this guy. Gets hit. Gets injured. And now Tajay Sharp is out for the rest of the game. And even longer probably. Throw down the sideline. Somehow Malcolm Mitchell caught that. I thought it was going out of bounds. Malcolm Mitchell catches it. Comes back down in bounds. We go for it on fourth down here. The throw. The pass was just a little bit behind Sugars. He couldn't continue where he was going. Had to come back for it and get stopped short. So the Panthers, third and eight on their own 11 yard line. Cam Newton starts to run out. Defenders were a little bit slow to react. He gets the first down, but Tremont Steed made him pay for it. And then on first and 10, a run to the outside and Derek Milner lays the hammer on Matt Jones at running back. Fourth and nine, they punt it away. Marquise Goodwin gets under it, calls the fair catch, and the ball just hits him in the shoulder, bounces off the Panthers, recover it. That's the kind of day it's been. We lose the possession again. Third and 11, the completion out there to the tight end, but Ronald Darby there to stop him just before he gets the first down. So we get the ball, second and 10, 18 points down now. So field goals, touchdowns, everything. Will Judy, though, still the one constant apart from his fumble, of course, that's been playing well. Third and 12 for Sitton. Can't get it out. Gets hit as he was about to throw. And would you believe it, the Panthers recover it again. Three fumble recoveries in our half. Another field goal there makes it 21 to nothing. Second and one. Completion to Will Judy. Nice play. Gets us to the 33. Really, we just hope we can score a touchdown here so we don't get shut out. Completion on the sideline to Brandon Coleman. Nice catch there. Third and nine now on the 12 yard line. Quick throw to Michael Thomas. It's a completion. We get the touchdown. At least we're not being shut out, but that's pretty much all we can say here. And then look at this. We know that we're running. We had a chance to maybe get another possession here. We can't even stop them when we know they're running. I don't even know exactly what went wrong there. I mean, Lance Sitton's accuracy wasn't perfect today. Catching was a little bit off, but I think mostly it was just decision making, play calling. It really wasn't the best called game ever. So Lance Sitton, 58% completion percentage, one touchdown. At least he, you know, at least he didn't throw an interception. Although he did fumble the ball, of course. Will Judy started so strong running it, and then we kind of had to get away from running it. And, well, you know, isn't that what I always mention? But I really think it was play calling that time. He did okay receiving as well, but really there is nothing there. Defense, they were on the field the most. What did they all do? Eric Nickerson got himself 10 tackles, a sack as well, half a sack for Fackrell and Dion Jordan, and a bunch of tackles for losses, a whole bunch of tackles for losses. But nothing else, no turnovers or anything. That's what we could have done with today. That would have helped us. At least we didn't get shut out. We managed to get seven points at the end. That's something for our egos. We didn't do too badly, although we did very badly. So one new injury, not a surprise there. That is uh, the broken collarbone of Tajay Shah. Three broken collarbones. I don't know, you know, what is going on with our physio department, our strength and conditioning coaches. Someone's doing something wrong if this many collarbones are being broken. I was, however, happy with the performance of Tremont Steed. Didn't see him too much, but he can lay the hammer down on people. And Derek Milner there in the free safety role was all over the place and really playing up to his new contract. So Darren Stanley has been cleared, but, you know, maybe last season, I may have even considered using him, but I'm absolutely happy to start Derek Milner still. Very good in the position. Now, after our offense, as we can see down there at the left, ranked number 28 in the league. That is, you know, not like us whatsoever. We're going to come out and surprise some teams this week. Problem is, even if we win this game, we're going to finish another time with just... 3-3, three and three. well not, we haven't finished 3-3 three and three before, but just equal wins to losses. Obviously we can't do anything about that now anyway, but that's really starting to annoy me. We can't keep going the entire season losing a game, winning a game, losing a game, winning a game. 
It's not going to be good. It's literally not going to be good enough. We look at the NFC South here and we are third. We're not even going to get into the playoffs again. Now, I know that's kind of, you know, the theme of the NFC South a little bit. But we're trying to do a little bit better than that. And to do that, you know, well, now again, another injury. This time it pushes Michael Thomas up, who we're happy to use and isn't new to the team. But injuries have been hitting us so hard this season. It's crazy. Anyway, we're happy with this team. I think we can beat the Lions. You know, they're 2-2. Two two. Let's take a quick look at their roster. So at right tackle, they've got a third-year left tackle, Sefa Minter. A left and third-year player, George McPhee. Only 74 overall, though. And a middle linebacker, the man who stole, absolutely stole, Defensive Rookie of the Year from Christian Stuckey, Gordon Stiff. 91 rated, though, you know. <laughs> His overall maybe makes it look like he deserved that. Wow, he is very good. 95 awareness there. That's his biggest thing. Incredible, really. And those were the Lions changes. Probably one of the most unchanged teams I've actually come across so far. 2019, pretty much most of their offense, I think, except for maybe left guard and right tackle, it literally exactly the same as they are right now. But with that said, let's get into this game. It's a revenge match. Gordon Stiff stole Christian Stuckey's Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, because he had more tackles. Christian Stuckey had more tackles for loss, forced fumbles, sacks, everything. Gordon Stiff just had a lot of tackles, gets the award. This is for you, Christian. Revenge time. So here we go. This is the game. The battle of last year's rookies and Christian Stuckey uh, misses the first tackle. Amir Abdullah picks up a first down on that run. It's starting to look a little bit like that Panthers game straight off. And then a completion there to the tight end. He breaks a tackle. And then Tramon Steed just comes in with the most ridiculous face mask I've ever seen. I don't know why he did that. And then first and 10 on the 28-yard line. Throws into the end zone. And apparently that was defensive pass interference by Jameson Nixon. I didn't see it. First and goal. They run. We stop him just short of the goal line. Second and goal. They run again. We stop him again on the two-yard line this time. So third and goal. Looking to pass. Kyler Fackrell gets in there, the strip sack, Dion Jordan picks it up, so we get the ball on our nine-yard line. Nice play by the defense, and a quick pass out there to Michael Thomas, who, of course, is filling in for Tajay Sharp now, and he get, takes a big hit there. Will Judy with the run gets laid out. Injury, but it's to their defender, so at least we know Will Judy is tough. That's what we need at the running back position, and what they have at the running back position is a guy who keeps making our players miss. We finally tackle him, but at the 12-yard line, first and 10 from the 12, Quick completion inside, Ronald Darby hanging on for dear life, keeping him out the end zone. But on second and inches, Stuckey got tripped up on the back of someone's leg, so he wasn't there to fill that hole, and they get in for the touchdown. So the Lions go up 7 to nothing to start the game. A quick completion to Chance Sugars there on third and five. He picks up the first down, shakes a guy off, rather forces a guy off. First and 10 now on the 40-yard line. Completion out to Chance Sugars. He breaks out to the right. Can he get into the end zone? Yes, he can. Gets the touchdown. But we have an injury, and it's Chance Sugars who has a broken wrist after this play. 40-yard touchdown, pays for it with a broken wrist. Flag on the play. What's going to happen in the end zone? Jameson Nickerson comes down with the interception. The flag was offensive holding, so we get the turnover. Quick pass out there on third and 19. I say quick pass out. Long pass, third and 19, was too long for Brandon Coleman. And we turn the ball over again. But that was a nice hit there by who? Tremont Steed. Big hits from him all over the field. And that should have been Eric Nickerson's interception. That was so close. First and 10. We run with Will Judy. Nice pick up there. Falls over the last defenders. Almost picks up the first down. Third and two. Quick out to Mobo, who's replacing Chance Sugars, who's injured, of course. And he gets a nice pick up there. Fights through some guys as well. First and 10 now. He's got time. Throws it out to Brandon Coleman, who makes a great adjustment to catch it. But it does mean he gets caught from behind. But we can see here what he had to do to be able to bring that one in. No surprise he got caught, but a great catch by Brandon Coleman. Second and nine. A pitch out to the left. Cowan manages to get all the way outside, fights into the end zone. That final defender wasn't going to stop Cowan. And he gets in for his first rushing touchdown in a while. Third and three now for the Lions. Eric Nickerson just missing out on a sack there, but obviously it's good enough because it forced fourth and three. But we do nothing with our possession. First and ten now. Pressure again on Stafford. He manages to get out of that one, but then Mario Edwards Jr. in with the strip sack. He's turning out to be quite an addition on that defensive line. Had a couple of strip sacks already, but then a third and one. 
They managed to complete to Amir Abdullah for the first down. Third and four now. Another chance to get him out, but no. Again, they managed to get the first down. Now down at the three-yard line. 12 seconds left in the first half, and there was no pressure coming in. Just a huge pile there in front of Matthew Stafford. He had time. Time to find his receiver for the touchdown. So we entered the half 14-14. That pass on third and nine was a little bit behind Cowan. We turn the ball over again, and then to the outside. He manages to break big. Tremont Steed, pretty much the last guy who can stop him. Manages to get him, doesn't get turned around. Nice play from him. Second and seven now after the big run. Throw there into a huge gap in the zone. Tremont Steed again making the tackle. Second and 14. And this time Christian Stuckey is all over that one tackle for the loss. We get the ball after a field goal. First and 10. Completion to Brandon Coleman. This time he breaks the contact. He's not going to get tackled from behind again. He's got a safety and a linebacker to beat, which he does. Brandon Coleman gets in for the touchdown. And pretty much this was down to a perfect release by Brandon Coleman. Gets downfield, gets a separation, gets tackled from behind but breaks it, shakes it off and then he can beat the other two players into the end zone. Great play from Brandon Coleman to get off that line of scrimmage cleanly and get separation from the receiver. And then we're on that run game now. Christian Stuckey is in there. This time again is in there. And there's just so many defenders around the running back now. We've shut the running game down at this point in the game. But receiving over the middle, still a little bit soft. And they pick up their first down there. Third and five now. Blitz coming in. And they complete it for a first down at the 19-yard line. And as the third quarter comes to an end, they run out to the right. And Mario Edwards Jr. managed to chase him down and tackle him for a loss. Third and 13. Stafford with time. And this time, Ronald Darby breaks up the pass. So the pressure wasn't there. But Ronald Darby had good coverage on the receiver. Lance sitting now, running out to the left. Plenty of space in front of him. Slides down. Keeps it safe. Nice pick up from Lance sitting there. We know he can do that when he really needs to. Third and ten. A complete. No, it's not a completion. It was almost a completion to Brandon Coleman. He couldn't hold on to it. So the Lions now, first and 17 after a holding call, and Stafford gets hit there, but just managed to get rid of the ball. Second and 17, a completion, gets stopped just short of the first down, but Tremont Steed with his second face mask of the game. And now a completion, though, for us to Brandon Coleman. They managed to pick up a field goal after that face mask. There was a lot of small plays, nothing worth showing. So the score now, 23 to 21. We, of course, need to score more points, and that's going to help us there. Face mask on Mobo picks up some more yards. Will Judy around the outside gets hit and fumbles the ball. He's done that now two weeks in a row. The Lions recover. Three minutes, 34 seconds left. Lions with the ball. Three minutes, 30 seconds, second and 10. Matthew Stafford under pressure, managed to get it out. Christian Stuckey there stops Abdullah before he gets the first down. They run now, and again, that was Eric Nickerson and Stuckey to stop him there. He gave Defensive Rookie of the Year to Stith, but look who's making the plays in this game. Christian Stuckey has kept us in it. Now we just need to get down there into field goal range to be able to win this game. Second and 17. Pass out to Will Judy. Look at him just dragging this defender along with him. Makes it third and short. Fourth and four. We have to go for it. Pass to Will Judy. He catches it, keeps it. We get that vital first down. And with 10 seconds left, we go with a run with Will Judy. He picks up the yards, gets us to the 25-yard line. And we're going to kick the field goal with one second left. It's good. We win the game. Defensive Rookie of the Year so long. Christian Stuckey kept us in that game. Will Judy made up for his fumble. And Brennan Tomlinson wins it for us with his leg. There we go. As it always happens, we lose a game. We win a game. Although that one was very close. It looked so good to begin with. And then it all started to go a little bit wrong. Lance Sitton has been playing well a lot of missed passes a 55% completion percentage is not good enough but some of those are dropped some of those are just massive misses it's a whole bunch of stuff will judy he's good we know that but the fumbles that that that's gonna be a problem especially because we have nate cowan who yeah okay he had a couple of fumbles as well last year but he we know he's a safe carrier most of the time Will Judy is a lot of fumbles from him already this year. Receiving chance Sugars did okay till he broke his wrist. That's going to be huge. Brandon Coleman, three receptions for huge plays. Moritz Böhringer in to replace him, and he's going to be replacing him for a while, I guess, with a broken wrist. And it's just another injury on top of our already huge pile of injuries. Dean Milliner leading the team in tackles today. Christian Stuckey right behind him with nine. And then Tramon Steed with eight tackles. I feel like I said that slightly weirdly. Sacks, only one for Kyla Fackrell and a strip sack for Mario Edwards Jr. An interception for Jameson Nixon, false fumble for Kyla Fackrell and a false fumble for Mario Edwards Jr. So Will Judy's carrying is 75. That is actually relatively low. 
So let's just, you know, pound a load of XP into that 84. That'll be better. So here we go. Once again, it's become a weekly tradition for us. Every game we take a look at who's the new injury. And this time he's out for seven weeks. I, I can't believe how unlucky we've been. At least Darren Stanley comes back next week. Keith Marshall, at this point, is the only guy here who's been replaced and maybe permanently replaced. We have not been lucky whatsoever. This is now, how many games have we played? Six games, so seven. It's still not a time to put anybody on an injured reserve list or anything, but we may have to look at a tight end replacement or see what's available free agency-wise. Well, that is it for this episode. Another injury to finish it all off. Another win and one other loss. So we're still three and three. We're still probably horribly behind here well they haven't played their game yet but we will still be behind we played the falcons and the 49ers so at least next week our place in the division is in our own hands again we've got to beat the falcons and we can at least be second the panthers playing very well though so they're going to be a problem but let's just hope one we can stop getting injuries two we can recover from these injuries and three the offense can start playing like they did today for the first part and a bit of the later part and a few less fumbles, which should be okay now for Will Judy because he's got 84 carrying, which has already put his overall up to 72. So I'll see you for the next games against the Falcons and against the 49ers in the next episode. <laughs>